Hi, I'm Mrs. Zimi, third grade teacher, and I have a lot of favorite books, and one of them is Trombone Shorty. Let's begin. Trombone Shorty by Trombone Shorty. His name is Troy Andrews. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? We have our own way of living down here in New Orleans and our own way of talking too. And that's what we like to say when we want to tell a friend hello. So where are you at? Lots of kids have nicknames, but I want to tell you the story of how I got mine. Just like when you listen to your favorite song, let's start at the beginning. Because my story is about music. Do you know what a trombone is? But before you can understand how much music means to me, you have to know how important it is to my hometown, my greatest inspiration. And there was music. There was music in my house too. My big brother, James, played the trumpet. So loud you could hear him halfway across the town. He was the leader of his own band and my friends and I, we would pretend to be in his band too. Follow me, James would say. There's one time every year that's more exciting than any other. Mardi Gras. Parades fill the streets and beaded necklaces are thrown through the air in the crowd. I loved the brass bands with their own trumpets, trombones, saxophones, and the biggest brass instruments of them all, the tuba which rested over the musician's head like an elephant's trunk. Let's find a tuba, there is one. Where ya at, where ya at, the musicians would call. All day long, I could see brass bands parade by my house while my neighbors danced along. I loved these parades during Mardi Gras because they made everyone forget about their troubles for a little while. People didn't have a lot of money in Treme, but we always had a lot of music. I listened to all of those sounds and mixed them together. We take a big pot and, and mix them together, just like we make our food. We take a big pot and throw in sausage, crab, shrimp, chicken, vegetables, rice, whatever's in the kitchen, and stir it all together and just let it cook. When it's done, it's the most delicious taste you've ever tried. We call it gumbo. And that's what I want my music to sound like. Different styles com combined to create my own musical gumbo. But first, I need an instrument. The great thing about music is that you don't even need a real instrument to play. So my friends and I decided to make our own. We might have sounded different from the real brass bands, but we felt like the greatest musicians of Treme. We were making music and that's all that mattered. Then one day I found a broken trombone that looked too beaten up to make music anymore. It didn't really sound perfect, but finally, with a real instrument in my hand, I was ready to play. There's our boy. The next time the parade went by my house, I grabbed that trombone and I headed out into the street. My brother James noticed me playing along and smiled proudly, trombone shorty. He called out, because the instrument was twice my size. Where ya? From that day on, everyone called me Trombone Shorty. I took that trombone everywhere I went and never stopped playing. I was so small that sometimes I fell right over to the ground because it was so heavy. But I always got back up and I learned to hold it up high. I listened to my brothers play songs over and over and I taught myself those songs too. I practiced day and night. Sometimes I fell asleep with my trombone in my hand on purpose.
Maybe not. One day, my mom surprised me with tickets. Tickets to the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. We went to see Bo Diddley, who my mom said was one of the most important musicians of all time. As I watched him on stage, I raised my trombone to my lips and started to play along. He stopped his band in the middle of the song and asked the crowd, who's that playing out there? Everyone started pointing, but Bo Diddley couldn't even see me. I was so small, I was the smallest one in the place. So my mom held me up in the air, said, that's my son. Trombone Shorty. Here we go. Well, Trombone Shorty, come up here, Bo Diddley said. This really happened. It really happened. The crowd passed me over until I was standing on the stage next to Bo Diddley himself. I walked right up to the microphone. I held my trombone high up in the air, ready to blow. What do you want to play? Bo Diddley asked. Follow me, I said. After I played with Bo Diddley, I knew I was ready to have my own band. I got my friends together and we called ourselves the Five O'Clock Band because that was the time we went out to play each other. Af out to play each day after finishing our homework. We played all around New Orleans and I practiced and practiced and soon my brother James asked me to join his band. When people wondered who the kid in his band was, he'd proudly say, that's my brother, trombone shorty. Where ya? And now I have my own band. It's called Trombone Shorty and New Orleans Avenue, named after a street in Treme. I played all around the world but I always come back to New Orleans. When I'm home, I make sure to keep my eye on the youngest musicians in town. I try to help them out, just like my brother did for me. Trombone Shorty. Today, I play at the same New Orleans Jazz Festival where once played, where I once played with Bo Diddley. There he is as an adult. Kind of looks like that too. And when the performance ends, I lead a parade of musicians around, just like I used to do in the streets of Treme with my friends. Where ya? Where ya? I still keep my trombone in my hands, and I'll never let it go. Here is Trombone Shorty. Here's the picture of him and Bo Diddley. Hope you enjoyed that. There he is now. It's one of my favorite books. To all the musicians in the past city of New Orleans, past, present, and future. Hope you enjoyed it.